uh, by a little more than a shade. So the excitement is here in Madison Square Garden's fault form right now. Everybody knows what's coming up next. And don't forget the main event. Two good fighters from New York, both from New York. One from Staten Island, one from Brooklyn. Roger Troop is in the ring, getting ready, and they're waiting for Marvis Frazier. This program is authorized by Madison Square Garden Productions Incorporated, solely for the entertainment of our audience, and any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this event, including the imposition of a charge for viewing the program, without the express written consent of Madison Square Garden Productions Incorporated, is prohibited. And Marvis is coming in on the far side with his father, Smokin' Joe, and his entourage. As I say, it's got to be a big night for him. And he did not pick an easy opponent. He did not pick an easy opponent for his first professional fight. Roger Troop is a pretty good boxer. Today is Marvis' birthday. Marvis Frazier's birthday, his 20th birthday. And everybody here in the folk form is singing happy birthday to him. So that's a little added feature. Happy birthday, Marvis. 20 years old. There he is. Looks like his dad a lot, doesn't he? Now, if you can only fight like him, we've really got something. Georgie Benton is the other man in the corner with Joe. Ladies and gentlemen, before the start of the main event, rather, before the start of our next fight, we'd like to acknowledge you in the ring with us at this time. One of the greatest fighters of the 20th century, the former world's heavyweight champion, Spoken Joe Fraser. Joe has always been a popular guy in New York. Gave you a fight every time he was here. This bout, four rounds, four rounds. Coming from Vineland, New Jersey, wearing white trunks trimmed in maroon, weighing in at 207 pounds, former wide receiver from the Philadelphia Bell, here's Roger Troop. Roger, Roger Troop. Troop. He's six feet, two inches tall. And making his professional debut, national Golden Globe champion, and one of the world's top-ranked amateur heavyweights from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He's wearing red trunks trimmed in white and weighs in at 198 pounds. Here's Marvis Fraser. Marvis Fraser, six feet one, 198 pounds. Roger Troop from Pineland, New Jersey, six feet two, 207 pounds. Referee, referee in there is Johnny Lobiaco. Look at that. There's Joe Fraser on the right and his son Marvis. Look how much they look alike. The same kind of expression on their face even. Both looking at uh, Roger Troop. Joe is saying, my boy's going to get you, Roger. Well, we'll see because as I say, Roger Troop is a pretty good fighter. His record, three wins, three draws, and three wins, three losses and two draws, but he's been training for the last eight months in Vineland, New Jersey under the guidance of Carmine Graziano. And Graziano is a very knowledgeable boxing man and we'll, find, we'll see how much he has taught Roger Troop. Troop very calm, standing in his corner, waiting for the fight. Nothing new to him, here we go. Marvis Fraser in the red trunks, Roger Troop in the white trunks. Troop the bigger of the two by an inch, the heavier of the two by nine pounds. Fraser, amateur record, 56 wins and two losses. He was the number one amateur heavyweight in the world when he quit the amateur ranks to turn professional. He started boxing because he couldn't play football anymore. He had a football injury and he started to hang around the gym, learned how to box, and now he's really hung up on it. 
This is a big night for him on his 20th birthday. Roger Troop, a former football player also. He played professional football, a wide receiver, with the Philadelphia Bell in the now defunct World Football League. training real hard for the fight. He's in excellent shape, as you can see. Marvis Fraser seldom takes a day off from the gym. Father has to chase him out of the gym. Got to be a little nervous. Got to have a little gardenitis, as they call it. Style, unlike his father, he's a pretty good boxer. He's got a, got a pretty good left hook, like his father. Nothing like his father, uh, as far as the power of the left hook is concerned. But it's a good punch. It's a good punch for Marvis Fraser. He'll develop it. It'll develop as he goes along. Johnny Lobianco, a veteran referee in the ring. Good man to have in there with these two youngsters. First time that Marvis Fraser has ever had to fight a three-minute a three round, by the way, professionally. Good left hand by Marvis Fraser. He's taking his time. He's picking his spot. Coop looks like the big punch is his right hand. He throws it rather slowly. shots counted. There were body shots. Marvis caught with a pretty good right hand. He's hurt again. Marvis is hurt. Caught with a right hand and then a left hand. At the end of the bar, at the end of the round, Marvis got caught with a left hand and then a pretty good right hand. And Marvis was against the ropes. If the round had gone any longer, Marvis might have been in real bad shape. Might even have been knocked out. We're going to take another look at it. Here it is. Best troop in the white trunks. There's the right hand. Now that hurt him. There's the left hand. Another right hand. And Marvis is in trouble right now. There he goes. Now this round, the round ended just about here. If it had gone any longer than that, Marvis might have been in a lot of trouble. Could have been knocked out. Troop is really operating. Marvis was defenseless at the bell. So, as I told you, Roger Troop is no patsy. They didn't pick any easy one for Marvis. There's Marvis in his corner. Shaking his head, saying he's all right. Georgie Benton telling him to slip the punches. Crouch and slip the punches. That's what he's telling right now. Throw the jab and slip the punches. Okay, we're in round two. Marvis Fraser, can he shake off the trouble he was in in the first round? He's in the red trunks. Roger Troop in the white trunks. Referee Johnny Lobianco. Dinger, but don't let anybody think that anybody picked an easy, mark, an easy mark for Marvis Fraser in his professional debut. He's determined now. The word on Marvis was in his uh, amateur days that he was susceptible to a right hand, and that was the punch that Trip caught him with toward the end of the first round. Right hand by Marvis. A straight right hand by Marvis Trooper, right out of the ring, climbs back in. He's not shaking on his legs, he seems to be all right, he's smiling. But it was a straight right hand, long right hand, that came all the way from the back. Trooper's been down. Marvis has been hurt in the first round. It's turned into quite a fight. Marvis is really determined. Take his time a little more. 
Trying to throw that right hand over uh, Troop's left lead. It's a tough thing to do. That's an amateur mistake. It's an amateur mistake on the part of Marvis Fraser. I call it a right hand, a right uppercut. Marvis Fraser. Troop caught it. Marvis has got the jab. He's got the jab to keep uh, Troop away from him. Try to stay away from that right hand. He's got to use that jab. He's trying to hook. He's trying to hook Troop. Troop's hands are just as fast as Marvis's right now. Marvis gets in trouble. He hangs his head out there and he's rubbing his right eye. I don't see any cut or anything wrong with it. When he turns around, we'll get a better look at it. There's no cut. It might be a little bit of a swelling, but no cut. Right hand by Marvis. Good punch. Now he's following up. That's it. That's the end of the round. Roger Troop was down early in the round, and he caught a right hand at the end of the second round. He also, Marvis Fraser also caught some pretty good punches, and he seems to be uh, rubbing that right eye. There seems to be something wrong with it. Nobody in the corner is looking at it, but now he's squinting with it. He might have caught a thumb in that right eye. That's Roger Troop's corner we're looking at now. Carmen Graziano in his corner. We're going to take another look at the knockdown. That's Marvis Fraser facing us now. It's a straight long right hand. Here it comes. And there it goes. Roger Troop goes all the way across the ring, outside the ropes, and lands on the apron of the ring. And toward the end of the round, Fraser Court Troop with a, another pretty good right hand. He had him in a little bit of trouble. Marvis is still blinking with that right eye. I think he might have been thumbed in that eye. We're in round three. Here we go, Troop is not quite ready. Now he's okay. Referee Johnny Lobiaco. Marvis throws that right hand and ducks his head. It's a bad move. That's what he's got to do. He's got to bob and weave, and that's what they've been telling him in the corner. Body punches by Marvis Fraser. Left to the head. Real good body punches. And to keep that left hand up. Good left hook by Fraser. Troop very fast with that right hand. Watch the right hand on Troop. That's his big punch. Troop a little tired, but powerful yet. Two minutes to go in the round. Round two. throws those punches, Marvis has got to move out of there. He's got a few things to learn yet. Good right hand, a left hand by Marvis Fraser. Troop covered up pretty well after the punch. Marvis is doing a real good job on Troop's body, and that's taking a lot of strength out of Troop. And you can tell by the way he's throwing punches now that the strength is going out of his body quite a bit. Still very dangerous with that right hand. These are the little tricks that Marvis has to learn. You don't get caught in the corner like that, you spin out of it. Troop is tired. His hands are at his side. Both fighters landing with punches. Troop in trouble. Troop is in trouble now. Marvis is all over him. That's it. That's the end of the fight. Marvis wins the fight. Troop is on the ground. There's no question that he would not have been able to continue. He's still on the floor. Marvis Fraser wins his pro debut, and it was not an easy one, ladies and gentlemen. Troop is hurt. He's on the ground. He took some pretty good shots. He's on the ground. The doctor is looking at him. It's Dr. Polk looking at him and Dr. Frank Guarino. Troop is definitely hurt. He would not have been able to continue. There is no question he would, would, have been, would not have been able to get up. 
if the referee had started the count. There's no way. Okay, here is the official decision. Two minutes and eight seconds of the third round. Referee stopping the contest. The winner is Marvis Fraser. Marvis Fraser, the winner of his professional debut. Two minutes and eight seconds of the third round. And that's a happy corner. That's Daddy Joe, Smoker Joe with his back to us. Roger Troop going over to congratulate him. It was a good fight. And I'll tell you, it was a good fight for Marvis Fraser. I think he learned a thing or two in that, in that fight. If he had gone in there with somebody with lesser ability than a Roger Troop, he might not have learned much. But tonight he learned a few things. He learned that he should cover up and that when he gets hit, he should not stick his head down and not look at his opponent. That's what he did a couple of times. He made a couple of amateur mistakes in the fight which I'm sure he'll come out of, and I'm sure that when Joe gets him in the gym uh, Monday, he'll tell him all the things he did, did wrong. I'm gonna... Here's the beginning. The beginning of the end. The beginning of the end of Roger Troop. Left hand to the body. Left hand to the head, he caught a piece, he caught one himself. Troop missed with that, and you could tell he's tired just by the way that punch was thrown. There's a left hook to the to the head, a right hand to the head, and now Troop is really in trouble. Troop is floundering. He's been hurt, he's been hurt a long time ago. And that's a wise move on the part on the part of uh, Johnny Lobianco. I'm going to try to get up in the ring and have a chat with uh, with Marvis Fraser. Hey, Paul! Marvis, congratulations. How do you feel? Good, good. Good. You had, a, you had a little trouble in that first round. Yeah, I went out kind of like with an amateur style and instead of thinking about what uh, George and my pop had told me, uh -huh. I went out trying to rush it and I got a little anxious because I saw that I could hit him. And uh, when I was boxing, he caught me with the right hand and kind of shook me up a little bit, but I recovered. Well, uh, the condition brushed out of it. Yes, it did. You see the spot you're standing in right now? Yeah. Right exactly where you're standing? Yes. That's where your father knocked Muhammad Ali on his pants and won the world heavyweight title. Exactly where you're standing. Joe, you remember those days? Yeah, John, Not I go way back. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, John, if I can take too much of this. <laughs> how does it feel to be a manager, Joe? Well, I don't know how, how well they're going to be feeling from there on in because sometimes I... I don't know. It's going to have to be some changes. And, uh, You're going into the gym yeah. Monday and do a lot of talking? It's going to be a lot of... No, my was all right. I just got to do a lot of change, and I will change. Marvis, how did you feel walking into the ring tonight? What were you thinking about? Well, I was a little nervous at first, and uh, after the first couple of punches were thrown, I kind of like get, got into my rhythm a little bit. Like I said, I got a little anxious, and I got spanked. Okay, Marvis, we wish you the very best of luck. And uh, and uh, I, know, I know you're going to be a great professional. You're a great amateur. And uh, we wish you the very best of luck in your professional career, and a very, very happy birthday to you. I remember... When you were this big, Marvis, I was with you in those days. I'm happy old, to be John? with you now. Yeah, I'm not old, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, we see you. Okay, Joe, good to have you. Congratulations. Okay, that was Marvis Fraser and his dad, Joe Fraser, and now a word from your local system. ESPN report.